months, we got two big Marvel movies that are coming out. We got Guardians of the Galaxy, which is coming up in May. And we've got just had the first trailer for the Marvels. And I am very excited about both. I just got more excited for Marvels. I mean, I was I was a little bit tempered to my excitement for Marvels because I didn't know how they're going to make it feel, whatever. I really like the trailer. And I understand there, there are people who didn't. That's fine. I thought the trailer was really good. Uh, which is certainly a lot better than a lot of the crap I've seen Marvel put out lately. Because in the last couple of years, Marvel has been very, very hit and miss with me. For every Shang-Chi, there's been a She-Hulk. You know, it's just been, it's been a mixed bag. So I kind of like that I have a couple things coming here that I can be excited about. But being Marvel and being these big movies, they're going to come with expectations. And both of them, I believe, have potential Achilles heels that could lead to a failure of both of these films. And each one of them is unique. And we'll go through them one by one. And we'll start off with the first one, which is brought to us by our next caller on the hotline. Hey, John and crew. Love you guys. I love the Marvel teaser trailer. Maybe because I've seen every Marvel show and movie there is, so I'm up to date. But what about other people who have not watched the shows? How will this affect the Marvel's movie? Please let me know your thoughts. Bye. All right, so uh, we, we caught him just as he was getting ready to go down for his nap, I think. But, uh, yeah, he, but he brings up a great point about the Marvels. A great point about the Marvels. Which, while I enjoyed the trailer, and I did, I, I enjoyed the trailer quite a bit. Uh, mostly because it also heavily features Kamala Khan, and I loved Ms. Marvel. That's one of the few Marvel things that I've truly loved in the past couple of years. Because there's not a lot of Marvel stuff that I've truly loved. Few things, Ms. Marvel was one of them. But he brings up a great point, and this is the Achilles heel. This is the failure point, the potential failure point for the Marvels, which is, this is great if you've watched Disney+. Plus. Because if you didn't watch WandaVision on Disney+, Plus, and guess what? Not everybody did. You're watching this Captain Marvel 2, and you're seeing, you know, Photon, and you're like, who, who's that? What, what's going on here? If you didn't watch Ms. Marvel, and listen, as good as that show is, not a ton of people watched it. They should have watched it because it's fucking fantastic, but not a lot of people did. One of the lower watch things that, that uh, Disney Plus has. But if you didn't watch Ms. Marvel... You're watching this trailer for the first time and going, okay, cool. Who are any of these people? All right, I see Nick Fury. Great. And we see a few moments with Carol Danvers. Okay, I know her. That's Captain Marvel. I saw the movie. Who the hell are these other two? And that points to something that's not just a potential Achilles heel or failure point for this movie, but one of Marvel's general dangers they have is they've gotten deeper and deeper into their cinematic universe, which is this, is they are now starting to put out movies and shows that you have homework to do before you watch them. It never used to be, for the first three phases of the MCU, you never had to make sure you watch something else first in order to be able to watch this and understand it and be able to follow it. And that has started to change with Marvel. It used to be, this was the brilliant thing, I've said this before, but it, the one of the big things besides quality movies the biggest key to success for the Marvel Cinematic Universe becoming the biggest powerhouse in the history of the box office is the fact that every single movie they put out was a viable entry point for a new fan. You never watched a single thing of the Marvel Cinematic Universe before, but Ms. Marvel's coming, or Captain Marvel's coming out, I should say. Cool. You can watch Captain Marvel and you're not going to be lost. There'll be a few nuances that go over your head, sure, but you're not going to feel lost at all. Never seen a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie before, but this Doctor Strange movie's coming out? No problem. You can go and watch Doctor Strange from beginning to end, the first Doctor Strange, that is, and you won't be lost at all because every single movie was like that. And when you make your franchise where every chapter you put out is a viable entry point for a brand new fan, then you're going to start to accumulate fans really, really fast, especially if you put out quality product. But what has happened? Now we are getting into the point, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe has gotten so top-heavy 
that now there are things coming out where you do have to make sure you've watched certain things first. There are prerequisites. Because if you did not watch WandaVision and just walked into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, you're going, what the fuck is going on here? Wanda's a hero. What? What? Now, if you watch WandaVision, you know she started her process of Breaking Bad. And then you get into Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness. And I didn't love that movie, but I thought she was a terrific antagonist. I thought Wanda was a great antagonist. But if you didn't watch WandaVision, you're going in there. What the hell is happening? What? Wait a minute. Why is she suddenly a bad guy? What the hell's happening? Right? And it wasn't on a big scale. It was on a modest scale. But still, that was the start of the process. And now, if you're not a Disney Plus subscriber and you haven't watched Ms. Marvel, and again, not a lot of people have, and you haven't watched WandaVision, you got two of your three main characters in there. And you're like, I have no idea who these people are. But this trailer is acting like I should know who they are. But you don't. And if we're going to talk about failure points, I think the failure point here for for the Marvels is going to be just that, is that this is a movie that seems to be predicated on the audience needing to do homework before watching it. And that is something the Marvel Cinematic Universe never did through their first three things. We talked a lot about, I, I had a friend of mine who had never seen a single Marvel Cinematic Universe movie and then Infinity War came out. And they watched Infinity War. They were able to watch it, no problem. Because that's the way Kevin Feige made the movies. Every movie was an entry point. And they're kind of getting away from that. So I agree with you, our sleepy friend, that I think this is going to be a problem for them. And they're going to have to make some trailers in the coming months, You know, hopefully much closer to when the release of this movie, which is November. They're going to have to make some trailers that... Do not make it feel like you're going to be lost if you watch this movie. And that's going to be a tall order. So we'll see what they do. So that, to me, is the failure point of the Marvels. If it's going to fail, that's going to be one of the things that's going to hurt it. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, your utility bills and favorite streaming services, inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. You guys know that ever since I switched to Mint Mobile, I've been saving almost 70% a month over my my old phone plan. For people looking for extra savings this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia.